Hello and good evening and good day everyone. I am back here with all of you and today we are back with B-Roll Aglin as you can see him right here. So uh, welcome B-Roll. I'm glad that you are joining us tonight once again as this is your second uh, webinar uh, this week with us. So thanks a lot for uh, taking you know time and presenting another topic and uh, well uh, tonight we will talk about azospermia and male infertility and again Biro has prepared a presentation very nice presentation with videos so I'm sure you will find it interesting and useful uh, and of course we will start with the presentation and afterwards as always we will have our Q&A session so don't forget to type the questions that you might have in mind and Biro will uh, definitely help you out and how is your day going Biro I hope you are feeling okay and ready yeah, to start great well we are preparing here for Easter yes and, that's wonderful okay, if, well, probably there are some patients also here for Easter yes I okay. just congratulate and of course we will have a long weekend that will be nice and I'm glad to be here once again uh, last time we discussed about generally about the effect which can happen for the sperm. And this time, uh, this is more serious topic. We will try mm -hmm. to talk about azospermia. Excellent. Uh, yeah, I was actually trying to prepare all week some uh, good material to show, to share with uh, patients, with professional people here. Uh, I guess that will be helpful for everyone. Yes, I have no doubt here. Actually, I already uh, kind of seen what you have uh, prepared, so I'm uh, I'm sure you will find it uh, useful and very um, interesting. Uh, so, um, as always, just remember that it's being recorded, and of course, I guess uh, we can start. Okay, Birol. So, yeah. if you can start sharing your screen, so we can okay. see it, and we can begin. Yeah. Okay, thank you. thank you. Hello once again. Uh, okay, that uh, last uh, webinar we tried to discuss about possible effect, what can uh, increase or decrease uh, number of sperm on a male. And this webinar we will try to see what will happen if there is absent sperm or there is no any sperm uh, after testicular uh, surgery even. Uh, if it is the end of solution or still we have possibility to get uh, to achieve a baby from IVF uh, even if there is a difficult male factor. So first of all, let's try to know what is azospermia. So azospermia is the condition in which sperm are not detectable in an ejaculate. So basically, which we get a sperm with method of masturbation so we will not find any moved or uh, immotile spermatozoid uh, in a microscopic checking so if no sperm seen in semen sample then we mostly centigrade this sperm with a 3000 g speed uh, almost 15 minutes then we check again with a microscopic checking and if we don't have still spermatozoid that we are calling azospermia so there is a zero sperm count so classification of azospermia we have a basically uh, three kind of uh, situation first is a normal spermatogenesis second non-obstructive azospermia and obstructive azospermia so when we found all tubules have spermatozoid that, that we are calling a normal spermatogenesis and mostly we found uh, big number of concentration on the microscopic checking. If we have only like around 20% of tubules which have a sperm that we are calling non-obstructive as a spermia. And this number, if decreased to 100 tubes of the, uh, one of the 100 tubes have sperm, then we are calling obstructive as a spermia. Obstructive as a spermia, sperm produced by the testis, but that there is no live or immotile sperm in the semen. And non-obstructive azospermia, there is a production of sperm, very low or absent. So there are two causes of this situation. First is if there is a defect on the production 
uh, by testes, and second is defect at the level of hypothalamus. So what uh, we can do for the investigation of azospermia, of course, the basically first thing, semen analysis, then endocrine evaluation, FSH hormone, uh, serum testosterone test, LH or estrogen, prolactin or TCH thyroid test, genetic testing, karyotyping, and Y microdilations. The basic test, how we can investigate azospermia. Uh, if we check the hormonal profile, there is a balance uh, between FSH and LH. So when FSH increase, LH increase, that means that will be low testosterone. And when FSH increase and normal LH, we will find a normal testosterone and we will not get a difficulties even uh, to find the spermatozoid after testicular surgery. But when decreased FSH and decreased LH, then testosterone will be low and our chance will be less after the testicular surgery to find spermatozoid. Uh, if we try to make a genetic evaluation of the azospermia for the non-obstructive azospermia, firstly, we should check almost karyotype and Y chromosome microdilation because they are the main reason of non-obstructive azospermia. And if we check obstructive azospermia, mainly cystic fibrosis gen mutation, the main cause, and we need to follow it. Uh, karyotype is really key factor for the azospermia to find out the main reason. Uh, can be Klinefelter syndrome, so there is two copy of the X chromosome and one Y chromosome, uh, which we can, can detect by the karyotyping. The most common chromosomal disease, extra copy of X chromosome in male, the basic things of the Klinefelter syndromes, um, little or no semen producing, sperm producing in the semen, uh, small testicles, basically as physiologically, uh, lower production of the testosterone, uh, only the solution, microtesticular surgery or NGS testing with IVF. So Y chromosome microdilation and azospermia, of course, here is the basic things for the uh, Y chromosome microdilation. So missing the part of uh, Y chromosome, as you see in the image on the right side. So there are a part of uh, chromosome already missed. So that is a basically find, we find out on microscopic check, checking, no sperm producing. And micro testicular surgery and after to create embryos by uh, IVF uh, and ICSI techniques, so NGS recommended to find out a totally healthy embryos. Of course, there are always who has uh, Y chromosome microdilation, genetic transmission risk. That's why if you go through IVF with Y chromosome microdilation, so NGS should be mandatory to get healthy embryos for the transfer. Obstructive azospermia, uh, how we can get the sperm retrieval, percutaneous epididymal sperm aspiration, microsurgical epididymal sperm aspiration, and a testicular sperm aspiration. There are three different techniques uh, to get uh, sperm retrieval during obstructive azospermia. Of, of course, a microsurgical epididymal sperm aspiration is the uh, most successful one. So if we come to non-obstructive sperm retrieval techniques, testicular sperm aspiration, while we are going through one syringe with under local anesthesia, and we are trying to get from the tubus spermatozoid. Testicular sperm extraction, uh, this is also uh, part of uh, under uh, general anesthesia, so we are trying to take a part of testis, and inside of this tissue, we are trying to search semen. Of course, there is no uh, specific way just to find out a production center here. That's why testicular sperm extraction, uh, they are getting a urologist mostly or surgeon getting a big part of uh, tissue and we are trying to find the tubules inside of big part of tissue. And microsurgical or testicular sperm extraction is the most successful one while we are just determining directly seminifar tubules and we are trying to find the sperm production center. 
uh, when we check the uh, obstructive and non-obstructive azospermia, mostly uh, for obstructive uh, azospermia, uh, that we find out a mechanical blockage in the testes. So spermatogenesis uh, procedure are totally normal, but somewhere because of the program itself that apoptosis damage, there are mechanical blockage and sperm is not passing through channels. So that's why in the semen there is no uh, motile or immotile spermatozoid. Non-obstructive azospermia is totally different because there is a testicular failure that will be mostly high FSH LH, low testosterone and a small testis. So production is not totally enough. That's why spermatogenesis is not normal. So which is the best sperm retrieval technique for non-obstructive azospermia? There are testicular aspiration, as I said, the through syringe, we can just under local anesthesia, we can enter, try to enter the tubules and just aspirate. Uh, of course, if there is a normal spermatogenesis, there is a chance to find out sperm, uh, but this is mostly very rare. And of course, um, as morphologically, this kind of spermatozoid will not have a very big potential. Uh, if we get a test, uh, I mean a testicular surgery, that is a most successful we are, because we are getting directly part of tissue and we have chance to reach as embryologists directly inside of tubules and to find uh, more quality of the spermatozoid which have possibility less sperm DNA fragmentation. And of course, mostly uh, when we make a testicular surgery after fertilization is very high and even if morphology looks worse because of low sperm DNA fragmentation, mostly we get high quality of embryos. Uh, let's focus on the microsurgical testicular sperm extraction. So microtesticular surgery technology developed to detect sperm microscopic testicular tubules. So we are going through special microscope. We, as you see in the right side by the circle, we directly find out the tubules, which is a sperm production center, and just to take a part of tubules over there, as you see in the down in the petri dish, there are almost a very small pieces. If we compare with the regular testicular surgery, so tissue should be uh, double or triple times bigger than this. Uh, so that's why there is an advantage of microsurgical testicular sperm extraction. There is higher chance to find sperm because of the production center and tubules. Uh, and mostly when we found sperm through microsurgical testicular uh, extraction, quality is a much more fine and the motility much more high. So size of testicular tissue, as I said, is smaller and more effective than regular uh, surgical sperm extraction techniques. So in the first video now you will see how we are trying to determine uh, exactly sperm production center and seminal fire tubules. So uh, this is a directly from the uh, microscope objective. So it has a special camera which is a growing uh, 60 times so this part and we just find out uh, tubules and we aspirate. So uh, that after that, we are trying to search after the dissection of these tubules, embryologists trying to search under microscope to find out uh, motile sperm. So as you see, there are many different sperm and sperm at it over there. And finally, when we find the motile sperm, we just aspirate and using for uh, intracytoplasmic sperm injection as ICSI. So um, I will try to share kind of study uh, which is evaluating the outcome between conventional testicular surgery uh, for non-obstructive azospermia. So and you see uh, FSH and LH when uh, is uh, high. So almost we find out uh, testicular surgery negative results. So we cannot find the spermatozoid. And when testosterone is low, also we get 
uh, non-sperm found. That, that is normal because, you know, FSH and LH is working at opposite for the testosterone. And also, uh, as you see in the study, age group is the same and prolactin level almost is the same. And the graphics, it shows uh, how is the testicular surgery positive and negative cases by the FSH level. So when FSH level increase, well, totally uh, also testicular surgery negative cases are increasing. This is another uh, study. It's show, showing uh, for the after the micro dissection testicular sperm extraction, how we get for non-obstructive vasospermia. Uh, when you see for the different kind of effect for the Sertoli cells and maturation arrest, so during the uh, Sertoli cell percentage increasing, also we can find a less number of spermatozoids. At the same graphic in the uh, right side, when uh, it's increasing at testicular surgery, after the testicular surgery, to find a number of spermatozoids, an uns unsuccessful uh, result rate is increasing as well. So uh, this study shows how male and female factors that influence the intracytoplasmic sperm injection outcome in azospermia and aspermia. Of course, it's important because when we try to analyze female and male factor, if sometimes a both of them can be, of course, uh, we need to understand which factor can be much more effective. Uh, and then we can try to... Uh, built a uh, system of the working or uh, process in the laboratory. So here, as you see, as a male pathology, uh, when non-obstructive or obstructive azospermia, as almost 100 cases, they analyzed similar age group uh, between male and female. So um, number of pregnancy, if we check from, from the non-obstructive uh, non azospermia, 22, almost like a uh, thirty percent and obstructive azospermia around uh, twenty percent. So that shows uh, when problem in the male factor in the right side, you will see the same situation as a female. Uh, female fertilization rate and pregnancy rate are much more higher because we have a more possibility for the female factor to work on it, but the male factor are limited. When we find out uh, spermatozoid after testicular surgery, if we don't use any kind of uh, advanced technologies or a special way to increase the chance of activity after the fertilization between oocyte and spermatozoid, uh, we cannot find almost high quality of embryo. While morphologically sperm is not perfect, of course, because we have a limited number. Sometimes after testicular surgery, we are able to find only one or two motile sperm. Uh, and immotile sperm, you can try to use as a chemical uh, active, activator like a pentoxifilin, which can increase the chance of uh, movement of the spermatozoid, but still uh, embryo quality can be limited. But in female factor, of course, we have more chance to increase quality of oocyte, number of oocyte, and also after fertilization, there are many advanced laboratory technologies which can increase the chance of uh, blastocyst outcome. So uh, what will happen while spermatozoa cannot be obtained by Microdissection test operation. This is in many cases of azospermia, almost 60%. Yeah, you can try to make a microdissection with a testicular surgery, but still there is possibility we cannot find spermatozoid. Is there any alternative route what we can use for that? Of course, there are. Uh, this is a very new technique around spermatid injection, because even if we don't have any spermatozoid, while if patient has active tubers, so we have possibility to find a spermatid. Spermatid is the first version of the sperm. Still there are uh, genetic activity, and we can try to use that activity for fertilization and embryo receiving. That we are calling as a round spermatid injection. 
is a method of uh, assisted in vitro fertilization in which a precursor of mature sperm obtained by ejaculate specimens or testicular sperm extraction. Basically what we are doing, I will show the next slide, we are just getting a tubus after the testicular surgery. We are trying to find inside the spermatids and we are using this spermatid for the fertilization. So as you see on the image, the first one, there are how it looks in this, uh, te after testicular surgery, certainly cells, round spermatid and spermatogonium. So which we are using for fertilization, and this is spermatid. Spermatid already uh, get a maturation and already include the DNA part. So uh, we are choosing the best uh, spermatid, which can be a uh, potential of to create a spermatozoid. So we just select with the special pipettes. So several of them depends of number of oocyte and we just inject them. And with a special electrical activator, we are just making activation between oocyte and spermatozoid. So there is a video now I will try to show how we are doing that. This is the spermatid, what you see. Uh, we are just catching spermatid and we are trying to inject to, to all side as we are doing ICSI. So now we will inject the spermatid and we will try to uh, activate this. We need to give some electrical pulse so to push this uh, spermatozoid Spermatid to get a spermatozoid and a fertilized eggs. So, in the next, uh, there is the advanced technologies which we need to use to activate this sperm, uh, spermatid. So, as you see, this is a kind of preparation how we are activating. We already inject spermatid in, inside of uh, oocyte, uh, egg, and now we are giving electrical pulse, as you see. We are loading some kind of uh, voltage and then we are applying already inside of dish there is fertilized i mean there is a sperm which uh, an egg uh, which we use a spermatid to inject to all side and now we put on the dish and just we give electrical pulse of course it's not enough only to use this one uh, but still uh, when we make the testicular surgery if we obtain a number of spermatozoids, which is enough for fertilization. And if we have a chance for selection, better to use additional techniques as IMSI technology uh, to try to find out high quality of spermatozoid. And we are using for that IMSI technology. Now you will see this is a 600 times a magnification. We are trying to determine as spermatozoid, especially on head and neck. As you see, the first sperm which is coming from up but totally fine, and second sperm has already some uh, unshaped head and some defect. So by this way, we are able to choose the best spermatozoid. While even uh, if there is a, some vacuola which is inside of head, getting energy from the spermatozoid. If there is a, some small defect, even we can find out by IMSI technology and we will not inject some sperm. If we have, of course, a possibility, still I am saying after the testicular surgery, we, we will have limited number of sperm. But sometimes, uh, because we are taking from the different of part of testis, many different samples, and basically uh, we find out almost a, from the different tubus, at least from each tubus, 20 to 30 spermatozoids. Still, it's enough to, to make a selection by IMSI technology and inject. And another option, this is the last option actually, if any of them is not working, of course still a sperm donation is available. Sperm donation is the process of a man donating his sperm to someone who wants to have a baby. Uh, donated sperm can be used for IUI intrauterine insemination and ICSI intracytoplasmic sperm injection treatments. And there is possibility to have baby through donor uh, sperm for heterosexual couples who has a male factor issue, as if we cannot find even with testicular surgery or even with round sperm injection technique any uh, result. 
And of course, for the lesbian couples and single women is available to use a sperm donation. It is how it looks as sperm bank and donor sperm. So still you, you are available to see uh, image, childhood image of the egg donor, a uh, sperm donor, and to get a different uh, information as a blood type, phenotype, phenotypical uh, information. And of course, uh, you have a criteria according to your criteria, you can uh, search and find out which donor is matching with you. Uh, mostly, of course, is a critical issue, like should be determined the genetic factor very well. We are trying to make many different tests, the genetic test and viral test to find out uh, best sperm donor, so which will not give any potential risk in the future. Uh, that is important. Okay, you get a testicular surgery, we found sperm, but mostly, of course, we will not be able to use this sperm for the fresh cycle. Uh, some of the clinic are using as a common process this a day of all site pickup. They are trying to make uh, testicular surgery, but of course this is very risky. Finally, there is still possibility to don't find the spermatozoid and to collect a number of eggs and to put under risk is not a good uh, way. That's why we need to find out the sperm after testicular surgery and freeze. So there are several different methods for the cryopreservation of testicular and epididymal sperm are available. So first is a direct freezing as we are just getting tissue or tubus and directly we put with the cryoprotectant and we freeze. This is the first way. Second way, freezing after dissection as tubus. We are just making dissection on the tubus. We are trying to remove all sperms out of the uh, liquid which we are using a uh, buffer which contain human serum albumin to protect the sperm. And a third method, uh, freezing after dissection and centrifugation. So we are just making a centrifuge to prepare the red sperm and freeze without tissue. So frozen sperm uh, is effective as a fresh sperm. It's, and there is no difference as like an, even if you have a normal zoospermia, there is no any kind of significant difference between cryosperm and a fresh sperm. So this is a study for cryopreservation of the testicular and epididymal sperm. So how they uh, compare the technical and clinical outcomes. As you see, a fertilization rate uh, and implantation rate uh, between fresh and frozen, there is no any significant difference by the testicular sperm extraction. So almost uh, very similar, even sometimes the frozen sperm has uh, high results. So of course, this is not, not a way, I, I mean, I don't want to say like, uh, you have to freeze your sperm, but that is actually non-significant. So there is no risk for cryopreservation of spermatozoid on X cycle. Um, that is also kind of effective technique because while we say it, after the testicular surgery, we will have a limited number of spermatozoids. Sometimes we will be able uh, to find two, three spermatozoids. Uh, how we can freeze and protect. So because after freezing, when we told this, it will be difficult to find out those two live spermatozoids. Actually, I have in my... Uh, work uh, carrier such uh, cases so which i find out only one spermatozoid i am talking about 10 years ago uh, after the testicular surgery of course it was so difficult to to find out after towing uh, i remember very well i spent around seven hours in lab till to find this spermatozoid and finally i found out this spermatozoid and uh, now that baby should be around seven, eight years old, but still it is so difficult, time consuming and risk. Sometimes you will not be able to find. Okay, this device, we can freeze a sperm one by one. That is very advantage techniques. So in case of very low concentration of sperm count, after the micro testicular surgery or low count of sperm spermiogram, special device give chance to freeze single sperm or individually selected sperm. Of course, it is not a 
just if you have a single span. Sometimes we have limited span who has really best morphology. So we will we have to freeze either uh, like a female is not ready for the stimulation for the egg pickup or either different reason they are trying to think for future or after the testicular surgery. So I find out a several high quality of spermatozoid. So I don't want to, of course, lose them. And I have chance to freeze them one by one and tow and find out after the towing and to use for uh, X cycle. The technique could also potentially benefit patient with have severe oligospermia and only rare sperm in their ejaculate. So this is a very advantage technique, give us possibility to get a uh, high quality of spermatozoid after warming. If we get a conclusion, so firstly, microtesticular micro surgery is more effective than all other surgical techniques for obtaining spermatozoid. Microtesa gives possibility to get small size of testicular tissue. Of course, that is important uh, for embryologists and also, of course, important for physical damage to testis. And we get a direct tubus receiving uh, an increasing chance of sperm finding. After the receiving sperm through microsurgical techniques, advanced laboratory technologies may increase embryo quality and chance of pregnancy. As I said, like a several techniques as piezoelectric techniques, which we can activate uh, all sites sperm combination and IMC technology, which we can choose high quality of spermatozoid. There is no significant difference on fertilization rate, blastosis rate, and pregnancy rate between fresh and frozen testicular sperm. Single sperm freezing method is promising for testicular sperm, for the several oligoazospermia and teratozoospermia, which give low morphological spermatozoid. Round spermatid injection technique, very promising in case of no sperm retrieval after testicular surgery, and who is not considering to get sperm donation. There is already reported live birth, already reported many pregnancies, and the technique is working. Of course, technique is not uh, giving a big currency, but still before to get decision of sperm donation is a big chance to try. Sperm donation is very effective as last option to have a child try. We have genetic potential of sperm donor need to analyze well and to avoid possible genetic problems for the future. So this is the last chance, of course, to get a baby, but still, uh, most the sperm donation cycle is getting a successful result because donors are analyzed very well for the efficiency, uh, IVF outcome, and also for the genetic potential. So that's why mostly uh, with the sperm donation cycle result getting pregnant. So thank you very much your, for your time once again. Uh, I'm waiting for your question. If you have any question, I will be glad to give you answer. And excellent. Thank you so much for amazing presentation. I love that you put those videos because uh, we can that way we can see a little bit on uh, how it works for you every day. Yeah, it's your everyday work. So it's yeah. amazing to actually see it. Thank you so much indeed. Yeah, okay. And a brilliant presentation, that's for sure. And yes, now it is time for your questions. So as always, please put them in the chat section and Bureau will definitely help you out. So uh, let's have a look with the first question from Katz. Can azospermia be prevented in any way? Uh, yeah, actually, sometimes there is a easy way, especially um, sometimes there is azospermia because, uh, because of channel blockage. There is a way, uh, of course, this is not my profession, but uh, still there is a way uh, to make a treatment for that. And I see almost a many patient which we didn't find any spermatozoid after semen collection uh, they get after hormonal treatment or some small surgical operation just they start to produce a spermatozoid that's still possible even i saw like a cases after testicular surgery because we couldn't find any spermatozoid in the testicular surgery we find out and after uh, like a several time 
he tried to give a fresh sperm sample and finally he started to produce a sperm sample. So that is that is possibility, of course, uh, but it's not so easy, let me say. Um, treatment takes long time and of course still like a surgical part uh, can be same as like a testicular surgery, but uh, there are many cases, of course, it is possible. And thank you for the very first question and your explanation, of course, to this one as well. Um, let's have a look. This is a question from Angela. Do you have adult photos of the sperm donors or only baby photos? Um, actually, this is depends of country and depends of regulation. So there are two kinds of donor, anonymous and open donor. So when we get open donor, some of the sperm bank giving possibility also to see adult photos. As our bank, we are preferring to give uh, mostly child photo uh, because uh, there are uh, limited regulation uh, in our country, of course. Uh, but still, there are uh, kind of egg bank can give also adult photos as same egg donors. All right. Thank you for the clarification then, of course. So it's, it's the same with the egg donors, yes, that you can yeah. see uh, child photos, but uh, adult photos, it's a bit different. Uh, difficult. Yeah, depends, depends regulation, mostly. Okay. Thank you for that. Next question is, so uh, in which cases do you use activation medium? Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess activation medium, uh, she want to ask about piezoelectric stimulation. So uh, actually, um, there are different. Firstly, uh, if there is an implantation failure uh, or if there is a uh, fertilization failure before, okay, patient can try several attempts, but uh, mostly there is no fertilization or there is very low blastocyst rate or cleavage arrest. If sperm... If we check it like a, a quality of sperm very low, if it is teratozoospermia, if it is a very high sperm DNA fragmentation, uh, we are using this activation. And mostly we are using for all cases for the testicular surgery, which we obtain sperm, we are using uh, activation. So according to our uh, statistic and result, uh, we have almost... Uh, many cases which we cannot get or which patient didn't get for a previous trial, uh, any blastocyst or fertilization, and we get after the activation, many blasts and also very high fertilization rate. Wonderful, thank you once again for the clarification. And let's have a look, we have another question from Jimmy. With sufficient antibodies in sperm, does X is able to wash the sperm well and increase the chance of getting pregnant? Is there any other options to reduce the antibodies? Oh, yeah, uh, actually there are uh, kind of uh, publication about this. There are, uh, for such cases, uh, we are trying to use it to different way. Of course, uh, for the wash the sperm, there are two kinds of way. First is swim up, and second is a sperm gradient technique, which we are trying to wash sperm. Uh, when we get especially from the azospermia for after the testicular surgery, that is only possibility, of course, or to use a gradient technique because with swim up technique, uh, firstly, uh, as patient ask or as that question ask like will be impossible to reduce antibodies and in a second uh, when we make a uh, high density of gradient of course there is a possibility we cannot avoid totally but there is chance of reduce and of course that ICSI technique only the way uh, what we can do so that is a possibility to uh, increase the chance of pregnancy by this way Okay, let's see another question. Um, yeah, actually, uh, we are we are making a transport quite often. 
uh, from Ukraine to other countries. Uh, and mostly we have ready database, so patient can choose online uh, from the database which sperm donor they like. And there are two kind of shipment. The first is hand carry shipment. Of course, because of COVID restriction and sometimes it's difficult, but still uh, cargo shipment also available. Uh, and both we are trying to do uh, quickly as patient prefer, depends of patient treatment, but and depends of country, but mostly when patient choose and our career companies uh, trying to prepare documentation quickly and we are making shipment so quickly. So uh, there is no a waiting list or long waiting time if patient finds a good donor according to them. So for us, it will be very quickly to move the sperm and ship. And again, thank you so much for that uh, as well. Um, and let's have a look, okay? More questions coming in. So what can you say about long-term health for the babies in which was uh, used Pio, sorry, electric? No, piezoelectric. Yeah. Okay. Uh, of course, a piezoelectric is a new technology. It's a very low uh, length wave of the electric. So that uh, any article, any publication couldn't find any side effect uh, because we are doing in a very early stage. So it's already a fertilization stage. If there is a, some mechanical side effect, of course, we should see during the embryo development, but there is no any during the embryo development. Uh, we have already uh, babies, so which already born. We didn't see any kind of, during pregnancy, any kind of anomaly on ultrasound. Uh, also baby was born, we don't have any kind of uh, like abnormality or problem or health problem. So of course still, as I said, this is a one or two years of technique still need time to analyze, but uh, finally, like effect can be two sides. Well, first is a mechanical, we can see as a, some physiological effect, but there is no, and from the genetic side, so embryo already tested, which we are using for the piezoelectric, also we are testing, actually we are trying to test almost 90% of our cases before transfer with uh, NGS sequencing testing, and we didn't see any kind of uh, anomaly or health problem till now. And the question is, do you have guarantee programs with the donor sperm if the eggs are good? Oh, uh, I mean, uh, of course, this is a difficult. Uh, I mean, uh, we don't have such program. I, I don't think anyone has. But uh, because, you know, uh, it's a difficult issue. Uh, when we have in our organization, in our clinic, uh, we can consider much more. But when we are shipping spam somewhere, of course, uh, there are many different issues, quality of the lab, uh, like their techniques, what kind of treatment they have. Also, quality of eggs is a questionable. There are different views for everyone. That's why uh, we have also for egg donation, we have grant program, but for sperm donation, uh, we don't have such. Because still, even if you have a donor sperm, you cannot avoid the chance of sperm DNA fragmentation 100 percent because each sperm has a potentially different you cannot be sure which sperm you select for fertilization will have a zero uh, dna fragmentation so that's why it's a difficult to make a guarantee program for donor sperm wonderful thank you so much for that Let's have a look. Two questions are left. Okay, we will be slowly finishing. But of course, if you have anything else you would like to add, ask, go ahead and type those in. And um, the question is, so what genetic screening would you suggest for a patient with non-obstructive non azospermia? Uh, non-obstructive azospermia, of course, uh, karyotype for sure should be karyotype. Actually, karyotype should be for 
every patient who is considering to get IVF, but especially for non-obstructive, cardiotype is mandatory. And second is why chromosome microdilation, because this is the one of the main reason of uh, non-obstructive azospermia. And if you find out why chromosome microdilation, and then next step after the fertilization and to create embryo will be NGS. So we should check also embryo with NGS to transfer healthy embryos because it can pass from generation to generation. All right, again, thank you for that question and your explanation. And it might be our final question, but of course, yeah. if you have anything, go ahead and type, the, type, type that in, sorry. Um, so do you use piezoelectric, right, activation mm -hmm. and that have a teratosospermia uh, for the first IVF cycle or after a failed cycle? Uh, actually, we don't use for all. Uh, at least we need to see uh, one failed cycle with... Uh, fertilization failure or let's say blastocyst failure uh, but still because a teratozoospermia is a so large so if you have a 100 million of spermatozoid and if you are a teratozoospermia that means only one percent of sperm are normal so that means there's still many of the sperm so one million so still 100,000, yeah, 100,000 of sperm are normal. Still, I have chance to select high quality of spermatozoid. That's why, uh, but when we have azospermia and we found a testicular surgery, uh, several spermatozoid, for sure we are using, even in its first cycle, piezoelectric activation. But when it's a regular teratozoospermia, normal semen condition, of course, if we have requests from patients, still we are considering, but we are not using as a common technique. And that was another interesting question. Thank you so much, Miro, for answering. Yeah. And uh, well, we will be finishing. I don't see any more questions, but of course, I also want to add that if you do have any other questions, you can also get in touch with B-Roll and his team, and I'm sure they will be happy to yeah. help out. And uh, there is um, a link. I see that it's not there. So, of course, uh, don't worry. You will be, after the event is done, you will be redirected to B-Roll's pro uh, profile on our website, and that is there is an option for you to simply get in touch with uh, him as well. So, don't hesitate, okay? And uh, um, as you can see, there are some thank yous for you right here for your brilliant presentation. You're My pleasure. <laughs> I totally agree. It was definitely an interesting presentation. So huge thanks for that. And again, everyone, thank you so much for joining us tonight for your incredible questions for sure. And for, you know, spending um, this Friday evening with us as well <laughs> on this topic as well. Um, and Biro, before I let you go, anything else you would like to add? Yeah, uh, actually, I am also glad uh, to share all my experience. Uh, I hope we will meet again with uh, some different topics, interesting topics. I will be always happy uh, and always be ready to meet here and to share experience, uh, different uh, knowledge, different techniques because IVF is developing so fast. Uh, there are a lot of research, a lot of scientific effort to get a better result. And I hope uh, we will find out much more things, much more advanced technologies, which we can help the people to get, get baby because they are really affording so much as emotionally is so difficult for them. And I am really glad to be part of this uh, hope, their hope and try to help them. I wish everyone lovely evening, lovely day. So hope to see you again. Perfect. And we are definitely looking forward for our next webinar with you. Uh, you always uh, bring lots of new um, details here as well. And of course, thank you so much once again. And yeah. Birol, happy Easter to everyone else. Thank of course, you. remember uh, yeah. that we will, back, we will be back here, but actually we have a break, a little bit of a break, and we will be back on the 10th of May. So already you can sign up and I hope to see you there. So everyone have a lovely 
evening and also weekend. And of course, uh, this uh, has been recorded. You will be able to find it on our site, My Ivy Offenses. And I can only encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. As you know, there are over 300 webinars available, so plenty of topics. And there is also one more webinar with Bureau that we had on Monday. So if you would like to check this out as well, go ahead and do it. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone. And again, have a lovely day or evening. Take care. Bye.